the scan tab in Artech Studio has lots of different settings that affect the way you scan objects and capture data. Now, not every single one of them needs to be adjusted every time, but I'm going to go over the important ones that you would check before you start scanning. Uh, so let's start. We'll start at the top and kind of work our way down. So if you're using the Artex Space Spider, which I currently have connected, or the Artex Spider, um, it will have a temperature readout up here at the top, showing the current temperature, the optimal temperature. Now, the Artec Space Spider and the Artec Spider have to be in a certain temperature range in order to capture the most accurate data. Now, if your temperature is too low, it will give you, an, uh, you know, maybe when you first plug the scanner in, um, it'll give you a little another readout right under here in this empty space that tells you that the scanner is warming up and how much time is left before it's warmed up. So you could, of course, start scanning immediately, even if it's still war warming up, but again, you're going to get the most accurate data when it is in the correct temperature range. If you have connected the EVA or the EVA Lite, you don't have to worry about that. It'll just say scanner connected, and then you can continue on. It does not have a temperature readout. All right, moving down, there are a few buttons here. Um, that you can use to start and stop scanning, but I like to just use the buttons on the back of the scanner. Now, let me show you here how this works. Um, if you press up once on the back of the scanner, this is a little slide button on the Spider and Space Spider. On the EVA and EVA Lite, there's a little rocker switch. Press the top button or the bottom button. Um, this one is just a slide up and down. So I'm going to slide it up once to start my preview, and when, I am in, when I'm in preview, it shows exactly what you're seeing right here on the screen. Um, now, if it's the evil light, you don't have any color. Um, this allows you to look at your distance meter, which is this green bar right here. And this waveform, when you're pointed at your object, this waveform needs to be in the center three sections for the best results. So that's something that you want to watch when you're scanning. All right, so if I've started my preview by pressing up once, I can start scanning by pressing up again, or pressing that uh, start button right there on the, um, in the software itself, and then I can press down on the scanner to stop. Now, again, you could do all that right there using the mouse, but it's a lot easier to just keep your hands on the scanner and use the button on the scanner than it is to try to hold the scanner and make adjustments and start and stop with your uh, mouse over here in the software. So I usually just use the buttons on the back. All right. So when I'm going to start scanning an object, I press up once to start my preview, and there's a couple things on this tab that you need to check before you actually start scanning. So again, I've got my distance meter, so I want to make sure I'm at the proper distance. Um, I have, right here I've got my scanning speed. You want to just leave that as is. And then you want to check your texture brightness. That's one of the first things I check. Um, and this is going to vary from object to object. I'll show you that here. This is just a visual adjustment. So I'm going to point this here. And let me just do this right like that. All right. So I'm at the proper distance here. Now, notice this has some dark and light colors in it. If you're too bright, it'll start looking all blown out like that, and that's not good. You're going to have uh, potentially have bad tracking, and then if you have to reapply color later on, it's not going to look good. So, and that might be a little dark. It might be okay, um, but I'll brighten this up just a little bit, and that looks fine for this object. Now, I did I mentioned before that you're going to adjust this each time before you scan different objects. So this looks pretty good over here on this one, right? But if I move over, I've got this little USB um, SD card reader here. Notice how dark this is. So on some objects, you may actually have to adjust that so that you can start seeing that color texture. So you can actually see the text on this object now. Um, so that brightness works pretty well for this object. But if I move back over here, it's too bright for that one. So again, that's something that you check every time before you start scanning. So I'm going to adjust my texture brightness. And then something else you can adjust, this isn't all the time, but if you're scanning certain more, uh, objects that are more difficult to scan, like shiny objects or dark objects, uh, like really dark objects, um, you may have to adjust your sensitivity. So this slider here, 
Um, and you can only adjust this and texture brightness when you're in preview like I am right now. But this slider, and I don't know if I mentioned it, if you expand the advanced tab, this slider right here, this is a noise filter, basically, is what it comes down to. When it's on normal, it's filtering out most noise, and you're going to get the most ideal scans. That said, there are certain surfaces that you may want to adjust the sensitivity up in order to um, capture them a little better. Now, the higher you go with the slider, the more noise it lets in. The more noise you have, the longer your data, your data is going to take the process, and that noise can also ruin your small details on the object. So there's certain things where if you have to adjust this to the extreme and you're, not, you're still getting um, bad data, you'll want to treat that object. We won't get into that right now, but there are certain things you can do to object surfaces to make them scan better without having to adjust sensitivity. Typically on the space spider, you don't want to adjust this more than maybe a quarter of the way up this, this bar for the most ideal results. Anything above that, you'll just get a whole lot of noise. Again, it can work for certain things, but um, just keep that in mind as far as kind of a rule of thumb. Now on the EVA and on the EVA light, you don't have to worry about that. Um, the sensitivity bar is automatically adjusted by the software based on whatever the scanner is seeing. So it makes it quite easy. All right, so those are the things that I check every single time. Now, I do want to mention just uh, two other things here. So in the features to track here, most of the time you want to just leave it on geometry plus texture. What that means is it's going to use not only all of these geometry variations, which is the shape of the object itself, um, but it also uses the color variations in order to track itself and place all those frames that it's capturing correctly. Um, so that's what you want to use most of the time. Now, if you have the EVA light connected, I'll show you what that looks like. The EVA light does not have any texture features at all, and this is what you'll see. There'll be only the geometry option, it'll be automatically selected, and that's all you have. So you don't have to worry about whether you're changing that or not. But again, for the other scanners that do have the other options, you're going to leave it on geometry plus texture most of the time. And then the final thing I want to mention here, actually there's two more things here. I want to talk about real-time fusion real quick. So I showed you normal scanning. This is normal scanning right here. So it shows the color texture and it's showing the raw data that it is currently capturing, right? So that's normal scanning. Real-time fusion, if you click that, and you have to have a supported video card in order to use this, if I click real-time fusion, my preview still looks the same, but when I start scanning, the scan actually looks a lot different. So as I am scanning, it is taking all that raw data that it's capturing uh, behind the scenes, I'm getting a little far there, um, and it's putting it all together in real time, creating a fusion, which is your end result normally when you process the data, but it's creating the fusion in real time, hence the name real time fusion. So what this is great for is when I stop scanning here, you, you can see I have two different things, and this is from that other scan. I am left with the raw scan data, so I can still go through and process that data as usual if I want to, but I also have the real-time fusion. Now this is, I like to call this a low resolution preview of what it, your end result would look like um, because it is lower resolution typically um, and it's potentially less accurate and it's going to look a little messier. Um, again, those are general, uh, general terms there. It's not going to be like that in every single case, but this is great if, you know, maybe I just wanted a quick shape of this sumo character um, to pull into a software somewhere. And I didn't care so much if it's a little messy, I just need that general shape as a reference for something. Real-time fusion is a great way to just take your quick scan. I can go into my editor and just get rid of all this stuff floating around it and export this without any additional processing work. Um, so that's a, that's a nice, nice feature right there. Doesn't work well for every application, but it's something to know about. All right, and then one final thing. I don't remember if this is enabled by default. I think it is. But enable automatic base removal. So if this is checked, when I start my preview, 
you get this message at the top of the software that says direct your scanner at the base that supports the object. So what I'm going to do, notice when I get down here and it can detect that flat base, it puts a grid out there showing that it's detected the base. Now I can start scanning, it keeps that grid right there. Now I'm going to scan all the way around this object. All right, so I've scanned my object. Now when I stop, and close my scan tab. It'll run its fine registration, of course, but then it runs the automatic base removal and automatically removes that flat surface that it detected during scanning. That can save you a lot of time if you have a lot of scans. It can save you a lot of editing time um, at the end when you're done scanning uh, before you go into processing. So that's just a nice little feature that, again, it's not, it's not great for every single scan out there. It works really well for um, for the Artec EVA, uh, especially because you may be scanning a person or a large object and get some of that floor in there, um, and it's, it does a really, really good job of removing all that. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I believe that's it. There's a lot more settings there, but those are the more important ones and the general um, order that you would want to check them before starting the scan.